And don't forget to subscribe to Bag O' Day Crochet. You can subscribe by clicking this red button right here. And don't forget to click this little bell right there next to it. That way you'll always be notified whenever Bag O' Day puts on a new video. Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this wash rag here that you can use for dishes or um, whatever you want to use it for. Wipe off your tables, uh, I don't know shower with whatever can make it longer I guess make it a dish towel but we'll go ahead and do the measurements of it, it is approximately 13 and a half by about 11 of course you can make it taller if you want to or shorter okay um, I consider this probably an intermediate stitch it's not hard as long as you know how to do front, uh, post stitches it's mainly just double crochet single crochet and front post um, double crochets it this is called the um uh ripple stitch the raised ripple or some people call it the alpine stitch it's done in um any number of stitches that are odd an odd number so you can adjust your chain length to the size of a wash rag or if you want to make it a dish towel or whatever that you want so uh, let's go ahead and get started on this Okay, for this project, I am using a Hobby Lobby. I love this cotton. It is a 100% cotton yarn. There's 180 yards per skein, and I went through, this is all I have left of one skein. So you're going to need about 175 yards of yarn. Especially, and if you want to make it any bigger than mine, you're going to need more. The color I'm using is called Antique Gold. Now you do not have to use this yarn. This is a medium weight number four. Now you don't have to use this yarn. Any medium weight four yarn will work, but might I recommend if you're using it for a kitchen, like where it's gonna be wet, as such as washing dishes, drying dishes, um, I would recommend using nothing less than at least an 85% cotton. That's just my recommendation. Of course, you can use acrylic. It'll still look the same. It just won't be as absorbent as um, cotton would. And then I'm going to be using a size H, which is a 5 millimeter crochet hook. Okay, as I said in the beginning, this stitch can be worked in any uh, number of chains that are odd. But... If you want to follow along with me, you want to start out with a chain of 51. Now I'm going to show you on a smaller scale since I already have my big piece done. But once you get your chain of 51 done, we're going to go ahead and do a double crochet in the fourth stitch from the hook. And remember, we never count the one that's on our hook. So go ahead and double crochet in the fourth stitch from the hook. And then we're going to put one double crochet in every stitch for the length of the chain. Just like this. So row one is one double crochet in every stitch until you get to the end of the row. All right, once you make it to the end of row one, you should have a total of 49 stitches. Now, you should always have a total of 49 stitches for the rest of the pattern. Rows two through five are the repeat rows too for the rest of the pattern so two three four and five are the repeat rows it's a four row repeat so we're going to start row two by chaining one and turning our work what we're going to do is go right into that very very first stitch and we're going to put a single crochet and then we're going to work one single crochet in every stitch across until we get to the end of the row like that. So row two is this one single crochet in every stitch. All right I'm coming to the end of row two here and your last stitch here will go into the top of this little chain here he counts as a stitch so and now at the end of row two you should still have a total of 49 stitches. Row three we are going to chain one and turn our work. So we're going to start off by putting a double crochet right there into that very first stitch. 
And now we're going to work a front post double crochet down here into the next stitch, but not the single crochet row all the way down here on this double crochet row. Okay, so we're going to yarn over and we're going to go double crochet, front post double crochet around this double crochet here. Not this very first one, but the next one. So go around the post of it like that to where your post is on the front of your hook. And we're going to double crochet, but you don't want to do it real tight. You want to pull up just a little bit like that. And then go ahead and do your double crochet. Like that. And now we're going to put a double crochet into the next stitch, just right into the top of the next stitch. And then we're going to do a front post double crochet again, down there around the post of the next stitch. So we don't do this one right here because we worked at this double crochet for that stitch. So we'll go around the post of the next one, which is right here. So we yarn over, go around the stitch right here, around the post of it like that, and then you do your double crochet. But like I said, don't do it real tight. Pull it up kind of loose like that, and then go ahead and do your double crochet. Just like that. Now we're going to do a double crochet into the top of the next stitch. And then we'll front post double crochet around the next down here. So it's not going to be this one. It's going to be the next one. So we yarn over, go around the post of the next stitch, and do your double front post double crochet kind of loosely. Pull it up a little bit and then do your double crochet. And that's what we're going to kind of repeat until we get to the end of the row. Double crochet into the top of the next. And then a front post double crochet into the next, which is not going to be this one. It's going to be the next one. Double crochet into the top of the next. And then a front post double into the next. So not this one down here, but it's going to be the next one. Always do remember not to do the front post double too tight. Pull up a little bit on it. And we're going to repeat this pattern until we get to the end of the row. And that's what it kind of looks like. All right, I'm coming to the end. And I did my last front post uh, double crochet there. And then I'm going to go ahead and end by double crocheting into the last stitch. And again, you still, you still should have 49 stitches. So row of four, we will chain one and turn. And we're just going to repeat what we did on row two. And that was one single crochet into the very first stitch. And then one single crochet in every stitch across until you get to the end of the row. So row four is just a row of single crochet. One single crochet in every stitch. Just like that. Okay, I've made it to the end of row four. You still should have your 49 stitches. What I'm going to do is chain one and turn my work. So what we need to do is we need to get where the post stitches are caddy cornered from each other. So how we achieve that is row five, we're going to put a double crochet into the very first stitch. And then a double crochet into the next stitch. And now we will start doing our post stitch. So we're going to go ahead and do a front post double crochet around the next stitch, which is this one right here. You see these post stitches here? We need to work it between them. So go ahead and yarn over and go into that post stitch or go into this double crochet that's in between the post stitches and do your front post double. Remember not to make it too tight. Pull up a bit and then double. And then we do a double crochet into the top of the next stitch. And then we front post double into the next down here 
in between these two post stitches, we will front post double into that one. By doing this, we're making the post stitches catty cornered from each other, like that. So again, we'll go ahead and put a double crochet into the top of the next stitch. And then we'll work our front post double crochet down here into the next stitch. So it's not this post stitch. It's the one in between these two posts. So go right around the post of it, way down here, and do your front post double crochet. Pull up. And then double crochet into the top of the next. And we're just going to keep repeating this pattern until we get to the end of the row. Front post double crochet into the next. It's the one in between these post stitches. And then it's one double crochet into the top of the next. So just keep repeating this pattern until you get to the end of uh, row five. Okay, I'm coming to the end of row five and I just did a front post double crochet and I have two stitches left. I wanna go ahead and just put a double crochet into the last two stitches. Because we started out row five by putting a double crochet into the first two, we're gonna end it by putting double crochet into the last two. And that's what it looks like there. Now you can see that the stitches the post stitches are catty cornered from each other. So now it's just a repeat of rows two, three, four, and five. So we just completed row five. We'll, we will chain one and turn our work and we'll do single crochet rows all the way across for row six. Then row seven will be post stitch rows again. Always keeping your post stitches catty cornered from each other. See that? They're just opposite each other. And that's what gives it the ripple effect. And you just want to repeat rows two through five until you get a total of 36 rows if you're following me. You can make it bigger than that, but you will need more yarn than what I said in the beginning. So repeat rows two through five until you hit a total of 36 rows. Okay, now once you get your 36 rows done, now remember if you want to do it bigger, you can. I just um, stopped here so I only so one skein of yarn would be enough because I think if I went any further, I would have to break into another skein. But I got my 36 rows done. Don't tie off. What I'm going to do now is go around the whole entire piece with single crochet to clean up all the edges. So I just ended in my 36th row. Um, it's the row of double crochets in um, front post double crochets. So I'm gonna chain one and I'm gonna start working down the side. Now, as you can see, it's going to be hard to see where your stitches need to go down the side. But what I like to do is I try to put two single crochets to every double crochet. And then there's that one row of single crochet where you'll need to put one single crochet. So we'll start. So here's the double crochet on the side. So what I kind of try to do is work two single crochets to that double and I kind of just dig in to where I kind of get in the middle of the double crochet on the side so there's one and there's two now the next row was a single crochet row right there so I'm going to go right in to the end there of that single crochet Now the next row was a double crochet row so you see this double crochet row I want to put two single crochets in the side of that double. So I'm just going to kind of wiggle through and try to evenly, what I'm doing is trying to evenly space out my single crochets the best that I can. And I do that by trying to work two single crochets to every double and then there'll be one single crochet at the end of that single crochet row. So that's what I'm going to kind of do all the way down. Now, your the amount of stitches you have when you get back around to the beginning is probably going to be di different than mine because, like I said, it's super hard to see the stitches. And the only thing you can do is just to do your best to try to evenly space them out. So there's really not a set number that you have to have when you get around here to the end. Just as long as you did your best to try to evenly space them out. 
So that's what I'm going to do. I'll work around evenly spacing out my stitches. Like that. And it's not going to be perfect. And that's fine. It's homemade. Of course it's not going to be perfect. So go ahead and work one single crochet. Evenly space them out the best you can all the way down. And I'm going to meet you right here at this first corner. And we're going to go around that corner together. All right, I've made it up here to the corner. Now what we're going to do to round the corner, just so the wash rag lays a little bit uh, more flat on the corners, I'm just going to put three single crochet into that last corner stitch there. So there's one all in the same stitch. Two. And then there's three. Now we're going to continue working along the bottom. And you'll probably be able to see the stitches pretty well now along the bottom side here. Putting one single crochet in every stitch until I get to my next corner. And then when I get to my next corner, I'll put three single crochets into that. And then I'll continue up the opposite side, evenly spacing out my single crochet. So we're just going to be doing this the whole way around until we get back to our starting point. So it's just evenly spacing single crochets all the way around. But when you get to each of your corners, you want to put three single crochets in each of those. So I'm working across, putting one single crochet in every stitch. When I get to my corner, I'll put three single crochets. Helps it lay flat. And then I'm going to work, work back up the side, evenly spacing out my single crochets until I get up here to this top corner. Three single crochets, and then one single crochet in every stitch across the top. And then I'll meet you right back here at the beginning. Okay, I've made it back to my starting point. I got one stitch left, and I'm going to go ahead and put three single crochets into that last stitch. And then I'm going to end by slip stitching over here into my first single crochet that I made. Not the chain one, but the first single crochet. And I'm going to tie my yarn off, and I'm going to hide any remaining tails that I have. Okay, once you get all your tails in, what I like to do whenever I work with post stitches is kind of give it a little stretch out. Because post stitches, they kind of crumple up your work a little bit. But that's it. That's all there is to it. I think it turned out really nice. I'm sure my daughter will love to do dishes with it. <laughs> Not really. She hates doing dishes. But anyways, thanks everybody for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you like the way this uh, wash rag looks, um, I'd appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up. If you make this, I'd really like to see a picture of it. You can post a picture on my Bag of Day Crochet uh, fan Facebook page. I'll put a link to that below in the description box. Also, don't forget to subscribe. If you look over there on the right hand side, there's a link to some more videos that maybe you might enjoy if you since you like this one. Thanks everybody for watching and have a good day.